So I'm going to talk about the Nitrogen framework. It's uh, basically a framework that allows to create uh, web applications using the Erlang platform. So to use it, you obviously need to install the Erlang platform on your laptop or your server. And I think it's a quite interesting framework because it has some ideas. Uh, that's some interesting ideas I'm going to talk about next. Yeah, and because it's um, based on Erlang, uh, there are many questions why to use Erlang at all. And I think every talk about Erlang starts with this question. Why to use Elon? And here are the main differences of Elon from other platforms. First of all, it's a functional language uh, that encourages a programmer to write a functional program. Uh, second, it has a distributed, it could be distributed across nodes and you get it for free only by using Erlang. Also, if you program Erlang, it encourages you to write a fault-tolerant program by its uh, own architecture. And second, it's uh, what it, what makes Erlang different from other functional languages, that it's actually a process-oriented language. Uh, by what I mean that um, it's very easy in Erlang to convert any pure function into a process with the standard, standard APC. And you can write the similar style in other platform and languages, but they have uh, its limitations, you know. And uh, first of all, why to reinvent Erlang if it's already here and you can use it right now? All of that allows to construct applications that are robust and uh, are distributed by design and also, I don't know, maintainable. And why, what, uh, what, may what makes people averse along? First of all, it has a, a, bit a weird syntax. It's uh, unusual if you came from other languages. Uh, by the way, I'm long time Pro programmer, so even if I'm if me being a Pro programmer, I find I think it's a bit uh, frustrating. <laughs> no, uh, Erlang is not good if you are doing uh, some heavy computations. Uh, even if there are interfaces to other languages like uh, C. You can write a model in C and get interfaced with Erlang, but it's may it may it may get wrong, you know, uh, because uh, you need to. There, there are some issues. Also, the famous Erlang strings, actually the absence of strings in Erlang. Uh, Erlang has no notion about strings. Strings represents as lists. Uh, without uh, any additional information. So basically, if you see a list, it could be a string or it could not be a string, and Erlang has no idea either. And um, I found also that um, Erlang libraries are not good. Uh, there are actually many versions of the same libraries, and if you are, if you are a beginner like me, it's uh, difficult to choose what to use. But uh, it's uh, getting better eventually. So I think uh, the more people will program in the long, the better the libraries will be hmm. in time. Okay, so enough about Erlang. Uh, there are uh, actually several HTTP servers implemented in Erlang already, uh, namely five. And so it's actually quite easy to implement a web server in Erlang due to its nature. 
of uh, packet of uh, process orient orientation and packet processing. Basically, we can get uh, we can we can convert uh, HTTP headers into Erlang messages uh, for free. It's already there. So all you need to do is to show files, for example, to do some routing by yourself. And that's why I think there are too so many implementation already. And uh, Cowboy, uh, it's actually uh, most promising um, HTTP web server. Uh, it's fast, it's robust, and it's actually maintained. So most of the projects now rely on Cowboy web server. And there are actually several Erlang web frameworks out there already, namely Nitrogen. <laughs> namely Nitrogen. It's, I think it's the oldest one. And MTO, it's a kind of a development of Nitrogen with a few quite smart ideas and uh, Chicago Boats and Plutonic. Uh, but they are actually not uh, web frameworks. They are actually a complete solution like uh, uh, Ruby on Rails. So in case if you are interested, you can easily find information online. So I will continue to talk about the nitrogen. Uh, <coughs> the main idea of this framework is that everything is based on messages that are freely floating between uh, the server and the client. Basically, mm, it allows you to treat uh, the client, the browser, as a, a kind of a, a long process from the long point of view. So it allows you to to think about it uh, in the long terms, you know like uh, sending messages, getting replies, and you get it all from the beginning. It do uh, quite, uh, um, it do other things uh, as well, as maps uh, read to uh, Erlang modules. Uh, it has a uh, DSL to produce uh, HTML, but you might use something else, or you may extend it, or maybe don't use it at all. And uh, everything is Nitrogen is based on Erlang records. I'll talk about it uh, more later. Yeah, so nitrogen has uh, its own vocabulary, uh, like a page. A page uh, corresponds to a uh, uh, long model in, in some format. Uh, it has elements, actions, uh, postbacks, and handlers. And handlers uh, use it to extend the functionality of nitrogen. Uh, to, for example, you can replace uh, some routing mapping, you can do uh, authorization there, and so on. Uh, elements, actions are uh, building blocks, uh, how you build uh, your web page. And postbacks actually is a main feature of uh, the nitrogen framework. It allows you to uh, pass action from the browser to the server uh, instantly, no? Uh, and it uh, uh, simplifies the development of some kinds of applications, uh, with, um, like uh, web chats and so on, that uh, when you need to interface uh, to so many clients simultaneously. Yeah, I'll talk about it in more detail. Yeah. So uh, uh, actually people at uh, Nitrogen do some work to make it uh, really easy. Uh, they have a presentation on their websites uh, describing how to start development uh, with Nitrogen. And I found it quite easy. Basically you need to pull, pull the source code from the uh, GitHub repository, then uh, to, uh, you can create uh, a sample application just like that. Uh, make real inets, it uh, allows you to choose which web, web server to use, uh, like I mentioned uh, before. And then you just uh, start your application and basically everything should be working. And so it was uh, good. And um, 
Uh, there are another issue in Erlang, uh, it's uh, called packaging. Packaging. Uh, every modern language uh, now comes with its own packaging system and Erlang too. But uh, in case in Erlang there are several of them, but the uh, most popular is Rebar. And the mod model, model for Erlang distribution is to get everything uh, in one huge bundle, you know. So if you do this thing, you get uh, a folder about uh, 150 megabytes that contains all dependencies, uh, download it and compile it for ATU. So it's uh, completely redistributable in this, in this uh, view. Now, the uh, only thing you need to do is to archive uh, this uh, whole folder and to move to another server and you get it working. I mean, is it compatible with um, architecture? You know, it's with Linux, it should be Linux and so on. Uh, and I'll uh, present here how it basically is arranged in a nice again. So this is the very basic uh, index error model, module. Uh, uh, this this you you will get uh, when you make a sample application in Nitrogen, and here you can see the uh, the main ideas how things are organized in Nitrogen. So this uh, Erlang model is uh, responsible for rendering the index page that will be a default page of your web application. And uh, the interesting thing is here is the entry point in this model. So uh, the, this syntax is uh, the Erlang record. So uh, it says that uh, for rendering the index page, uh, we need to use a, a template called bear. It's also, also created uh, in Nitrogen. And this bay uh, HTML templates uh, contains some calls to uh, functions defined in this model. I'll show it here. So, so here are the bay templates. Uh, you might see that uh, uh, this one is actually called to uh, Erlang model index L, and the what 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 will be generated by the body function will be just inserted here, and scripts are, s and and this uh, JavaScript model you get you need to get included, and it contains some kind of uh, interface between um, browser document object model and JavaScript, and the Erlang machine, so when you run your site when you go to your index page, it actually creates a WebSocket connection to the server and allows to exchange messages between, uh, between your web page and the web server. I actually do it uh, all the time. Uh, yeah, and here is uh, a Nitrogen DSL example. So in the body function, uh, on, on ev practically on every function that's defined in this model, you can return just uh, plain text and it will be inserted as it is, or you can uh, return a number of uh, Erlang records, uh, predefined Erlang records. You can easily define your own records. It's a kind of automation for the boring uh, HTML programming. So you just define your uh, code as a, as a kind of models and you can use it uh, with some arguments uh, here so it's actually quite flexible so uh, as I said uh, here we can basically see the nitrogen version of uh, HTML yeah. Uh, yeah and And here, the interesting thing, uh, for example, here, uh, the button is defined. That will be rendered as a HTML button, uh, name, name it search. And so it's defined an action here, an action, which of type postback. You can see postback uh, equals search there. 
and uh, what will happen if uh, the user click or on this button and uh, the javascript event will be generated in browser and this event will be forwarded to the server for to the server and uh, here we can see for the handler for this event uh, that will be generated in while we clicking on this button here uh, uh, here you can see that uh, some functions some utility functions already defined in natural game to work with uh, forms parsing and so on and uh, what you can do in this handler is to fire something back uh, to the client uh, something back it could be practically anything you can uh, generate events to update uh, some elements you can uh, upgrade the DOM you can remove elements you can uh, execute arbitrary JavaScript code there so it's, uh, it's all programmable uh, yeah and here is the example for example uh, uh, this this line allows us to replace the content of the I give uh, defined by ID panel with some new context that is generated by the function new node here. Yeah, and this is uh, how this uh, new node a new node looks. It's actually do a database query and uh, format the some HTML to present as uh, links it's so when they uh, just I go back for a moment yeah. so when the user clicks on this button that is displayed on the browser the events will for will be forwarded to the server that do a database query uh, do some formatting and uh, present some result back to to the browser where that uh, nitrogen models uh, take care of, uh, of uh, replacing uh, uh, HTML and uh, executing uh, JavaScript so that's why you do most of your development uh, server side it might be good it might be not it depends of an application of course but uh, if you are doing some sort of application like a web chat or you are writing to your own WhatsApp, it's actually a good thing to do. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the example how to uh, execute uh, um, so-called uh, action. It, it is done by using uh, the wire function that is defined in uh, nitrogen library uh, here we can see that we that we associate uh, that we that uh, first of all uh, this html code will be generated and displayed by the browser and by using vf wire we uh, send some events to this uh, elements that is that was that will was generated no so here here we generate the html and by wiring the actions we can uh, attach uh, javascript handlers to this For example to to do something when we click or to uh, fire some uh, jquery uh, events and so on uh, and this effect this effect uh, corresponds to uh, jquery ui and so it's to do the pulsating no? uh, here is the post back again i think it's uh, it's uh, the core the core of the nitrogen and so it's a very important concept and uh, 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 here we, we have the same button the same button and we uh, by wiring uh, this uh, we associate uh, post back with uh, click action on this button so it's, it's i already talked about it yeah and here is the another interesting part 
So as I said earlier, you uh, get your connect your persistent connection from the client to the server uh, by design, no? And here how you can use it, and what is going on here? So the body function will render some HTML uh, with uh, GIF uh, with ID placeholder, and. Uh, a uh, separately run process will be spawned by this uh, VF commit function. And you can see here the function that will be called in one second that uh, simply increment, increment the its, its account uh, that will be shown in this uh, HTML element. So by using this uh, update function, uh, the DOM will be re-rendered on the client by the event that is generated on the server and basically how it works. Yep. Yeah, and here, here uh, how to implement the automatic page reload that uh, we were able to see on the last meetup on the closure. When you do some changes to your source files, uh, the browser automatically reloads the page. And uh, basically that is, that it is, this is all you need to add the, this functionality to your project. If you are using Erlang and Nitrogen, uh, you can see it's not so much code here. Uh, it's uh, using the sync library that's already bundled with uh, Nitrogen. Uh, sync library just watch uh, the source tree and uh, fire events if the, it, it sees some changes. And here we install the handler. Here we can install a handler and that uh, fires uh, some events to the browser in, in case the source tree was changed. And this is how it's done here. It's uh, basically a string. You can see it's plain JavaScript that uh, reloads the page. That's all. And that's why I find, found, found this uh, amazing, you know. There is uh, so much you need, uh, so less you need to do to achieve um, a remarkable functionality. Yeah. If you came from other environments as I did, uh, you may wonder how to connect to a database. Uh, the, and it, here are some issues that you may encounter. You know, for example, you need to start with a connection pool. So it's uh, to maintain a number of connections to a database, uh, then you check your working connection, do some queries and get results back and so on. If you do uh, this kind of thing on other languages, uh, like Perl, for example, or Java, things are a lot simpler, you know, you don't need to care about it. But in the wrong, you need to do. And uh, as I said earlier, there are some discrepancies in um, Erlang libraries. For example, there are several versions of uh, 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 Postgres driver out there, but uh, <laughs> finally they came to the um, uh, one version that contains uh, everything you need to do to connect to Postgres. And they are, there is no uh, common interface like DBI in Perl in Erlang, so I don't know. Actually, they have ODBC implemented, but it's not being widely used. I think there are some issues there. And uh, uh, so if you need to connect to a database, you need to kind of implement a database connection layer. And this is how it could be done. Uh, so the, this is a, uh, two queries. It's, um, it's uh, actually re really simple. They are, because we are talking about Erlang, there are already a solution that allows to do, to to create uh, a, a pools, a connection pools, a server, a TCP server, and so on. In Erlang, it's quite easy. So, uh, as you might see here, it's implemented as a OTP generic server. 
and this is the walker. The walker is using um, the Postgres Erlang driver called YPG SQL. See, it's actually quite simple. So this, this, this is this is mostly the you know the kind of um, interface from Erlang to from from no uh, I may I may rephrase. So you need to to think Erlang first. So to interface to database, uh, you need to start your own process, Erlang process, and Erlang process. Starting Erlang process is how you write program in Erlang first of all. And this process uh, will do all the database connection and it will translate uh, the messages you sent uh, to it uh, by standard Erlang uh, RPC to queries and present results back to Erlang uh, processes as uh, Erlang messages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Erlang strings. You know. Uh, here, uh, in order to to in order to have a proper string handling in uh, Erlang, you need to use uh, Erlang binary actually, not the list. And uh, this is uh, how it actually should be used. If you use it this way, when you have uh, your HTML rendered, you have uh, the proper correspondence between your text and uh, how you see it in browser. But you will not get it by default, you know. If you do it uh, this way, as you might see, yeah, and finally we get uh, this one <laughs> in your browser. It's uh, unreadable to human, but it's perfectly readable for browser and machine, so I don't know. Yeah, and also um, if you have your, uh, if you do all your text in plain English, you basically have no trouble. But if you are doing ETF yeah. or some international, there are some issues that you need to be aware. Yeah, so this this is this works in plain English. You know, this uh, Esther string will be inserted in the database with no hassle. And if you do this, uh, it will not work. <laughs> that is quite surprising. And you need to convert the string to a binary. Yeah. So you need to use the Unicode model, that is the standard in Lang model. So uh, this is how you handle ETF strings uh, in Erlang and uh, how to put it in a database without errors. And other issue with database, uh, for example, if you do a query for uh, an ID, you also get a binary string here. And if you try to insert it in a query like this, uh, you get an error again. It is also a surprise. And uh, if you need to uh, Finally inserted, you need to convert the Erlang binary to an integer using the built-in function, Erlang function. So this is uh, how Erlang works, I think. So uh, you need to do some manual type conversion between uh, database type and Erlang uh, terms and take care of this ETF uh, string in the way I've shown before. And if you are ready to cope with this, uh, I think you, you are good using Erlang. Turn next. Yeah. Uh, this, this is the example how you uh, extend uh, the DSL that is defined in nitrogen by default uh, by defining your own uh, elements. Uh, first of all, you need to define a, a record of some kind and uh, some function that uh, uh, tra transfer this uh, uh, Erlang record to some uh, HTML. Or it could be a string or it could be some other uh, predefined elements uh, like, uh, for example, here. 
So here we can see a combination actually. So this is the plain text. Uh, right here we can see the predefined text box element that comes with uh, nitrogen. Uh, here are the records. Uh, this is how you extend the DSO that is being used. Uh, you can extend the elements, you can extend the actions, and I'll show you how action are defined here. So, so here you define a mapping from Erlang record to the actions that actually are uh, JavaScript code. So this JavaScript code will be rendered on the server, forwarded for, to the client uh, while using this uh, WebSocket uh, connection and will be executed there. So basically you can do whatever you want. So you just uh, define, you just use some libraries, JavaScript libraries as usual and just uh, uh, use it from actions that you define uh, on the server side. You know. <coughs> like here, I was trying to, uh, not trying, I actually extend it. I use, I'm using here uh, jQuery UI uh, dialog. So if you have uh, HTML element, you can turn it into a jQuery dialog with a close and show functions defined here. And this is how it's uh, fine. So, so you can define your own uh, your own element called dialog. You can define your own actions that uh, deal with this dialog, and this is how it's uh, actually will look after that. Okay. Yeah, and uh, here are some future future thoughts that actually were already implemented in uh, N2O framework. Uh, you can uh, plug in the early DTL system that allows you to define your template using the DTL. It's a popular Django template li library. And uh, you can uh, do some more definition to the protocol that is being used between client and the server. Uh, for example, you can use uh, BERT uh, formatting instead of this one or plain text and just uh, to pass uh, Erlang terms uh, between Erlang uh, application and the uh, web page application. Actually, there are an uh, interesting library called Shen. Actually, it's uh, from uh, N2O framework too. It allows you to do some transformation of Erlang code to JavaScript directly. So in the end, you will not need to write anything else but Erlang code at all. So the HTML will be generated using the elements defined there, and the JavaScript will be generated from Erlang code using the parse transformations, which kind of are macros in Erlang. And the reactive is a popular term. Uh, I think the reactive ideology is uh, quite similar to the, the nitrogen architecture. So it's uh, basically easily could be integrated together because uh, it's uh, the same concept, you know, updating DOM on the events. And the, uh, th these events could be generated uh, uh, from server and from the client. There is basically no difference <coughs> at all. Yeah, I think that's all. Questions? Uh, some, uh, you mean source code? Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it can. Should be. So this is the application. So uh, it's in Russian. <laughs> so 
So uh, when I click uh, on this button, the query goes back to the server, and then the database is queried, uh, and the database results are presented here as a, as a link. Uh, you may you might see it on the previous slide. So if you are click here, we can see here another database query. And here is the dialog I was talking about. So nothing fancy, just the basic thing, things. And so it's it's a early, early, early pre-alpha. <laughs> so <coughs> that's all. So you can you can add something here. Uh, yeah, how, this is how it works. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, server has no idea what actually is rendered on the client. It uh, basically just uh, fires the events to, to the client. And these events uh, are processed by some JavaScript that comes with uh, Nitrogen. And this code do the, all, all the things. It executes uh, JavaScript, so it updates the DOM and so on. This is how it works. And uh, why it is interesting is because it allows you to develop the application on the server side mostly uh, in case of nitrogen and if you, if you are in tagwest uh, in the nitrogen follower and uh, to all you can do most of your development in a long only without touching even javascript yeah, but uh, I was uh, unable to start with N2O because it's uh, supposed that you already know what nitrogen is, and I was not. <laughs> That's why I started with nitrogen, and I think now I can move on uh, to N2O. But I'm not sure because uh, it's a uh, it's a whole thing, you know. Uh, while using nitrogen, you can use uh, Erlang and you can uh, stick with your HTML and JavaScript and you can, for example, pass some designs to designers that you're using uh, HTML and use it later. And if you are using uh, N2O, you need all your development in Erlang and it will be harsh for developers, you know, As especially for HTML developers or JavaScript. So it's it depends, you know. What about the tool to return support uh, web socket? Uh, is there any kind of emulation? Yes, yes. Uh, it's all start. It was started with uh, Comet. So every browser supports Comet, I suppose. So in case and the browser do not support uh, web socket, it will be fallen back to Comet. And uh, because uh, because uh, it is Erlang web framework, uh, it allows uh, to manage all these connections easily. And, and we can distribute the workload between nodes and due the nature of Erlang. You know, you don't need to do something special to to show so many connections at the same time. You know. This is what makes uh, Erlang and Erlang-based application different. You get uh, very much uh, from the standard library. And you don't need to care, you don't need to implement it, you don't need to design it, and you need, don't need to debug it. Uh, so you, it's just there, you can use it at any time. What do you mean? If you access the site with, uh, from Android, it's uh, or some problem, tablet, or mobile phone, 
I didn't try it, but I think everything will be fine, you know, because the JavaScript that uh, runs on the on the client uh, is, uh, is is simple. There is nothing incompatible there, and uh, actually, it's uh, it's another benefit, you know, if you do everything on the server. Uh, there is n not not so much uh, workload on the client because only thing you need to do is to display everything that comes from the server. It may introduce some latency, of course, but uh, if you stick to the messages, uh, that uh, actual the actual amount of traffic could be very small. So and uh, anyway, it's uh, it's allows you to 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 write. Uh, you can do things on client. You can do things on server. It uh, actually depends. It's very flexible, uh, so uh, this is very basic application because I was trying, uh, I was exploring actually how things are organized in uh, Erlang and how to program in Erlang correctly and uh, what can you do and uh, when I discovered how it's actually done, I was amazed and I want to share my amusement with you. <laughs> You can do both uh, if if you have a uh, hosting provider that supports Erlang. Uh, I don't know. It's actually it might be no good thing at all because uh, the Erlang distribution was queued actually by uh, Linux distributions. Uh, they've been famously known with uh, shipping wrong Erlang packages. Uh, so if you are using a uh, stable Debian and install it along with aptitude, you may be screwed because <laughs> it contains wrong version. And the uh, main advice for the beginning is to install Erlang from the Erlang solution websites as a, as a bundle and then just to use it. And if you are doing application using Nitrogen, in the end you get a uh, source tree that contains everything including Erlang. Uh, that is needed to run this application. So if your architecture is the same, the distribution is, uh, is, as, is, as, is, as, is as simple as copy one folder to another. Uh, if the architecture is different, you need to use uh, Erlang packaging system, uh, Rebar, and it will install all dependencies you need. So this way it could be distributed with various platforms. And you know, uh, the most amazing thing, uh, uh, I read uh, an Armstrong book that when he was needed an uh, um, FTP, server, FTP server to transfer a uh, file from one architecture to another architecture, it was faster and easier to him to write his own uh, file server. FTP server it takes actually about uh, half an hour, you know. And all this power is available to any wrong programmer. Speaking of distribution, and uh, also uh, I forgot to talk to, to talk to, to talk about the uh, Erlang uh, console. So when you start your, I just remember my show here. Here, what I, oh, uh, <laughs> I think you can see here anything. So uh, here I just attach it uh, a console to the uh, server process. So I can do some uh, long programming in the server right now. With, so I can do, I can call 
queries, I can do some tests, I can do anything that needs to, basically you can do anything from the Erlang console. For example, you may do <coughs> queries by uh, by calling the functions you already defined and to see how it's going from the server side view. No, you just uh, get into into the server in the, into a running server. You can do. Function calling, inspection, and so on, and you can even remotely attach to the every wrong server. 